So you just made a game, but it's simple and you want to take it to the next level and you don't know how. Then welcome to the first episode of how to make your game better one bit at a time. And we will start by learning about a cool side menu asset. Before we start, I want to say thanks to Daniel, the creator of this asset, for publishing it for free. Link to his website in the description. To do this, we'll go to the asset page at the asset store and press open in Unity Editor. Link to the asset in the description. Make sure your project is already open before you do this. In the package manager, find the side menu asset, press import, make sure everything is selected and import it to your project. The assets comes with two great examples, one for landscape mode and one for portrait mode. For this tutorial we will use a basic menu. In order to add the side menu to the menu screen, we will go to the second example, copy the side menu, paste it in our scene and put it inside the canvas. It's too small, so let's make it bigger. But wait, we have a problem. Our menu is invisible and it's hard to edit it this way. To fix it, disable the maskable option in the image component. Now we can see it and resize it and edit as much as we want. The last thing we need to resize is the handle. And in order to make it our own, we will change the side menu image to another image and the background image we make invisible by changing the alpha color to zero. And that is how we got ourselves a basic side menu. Wait! Before we start to celebrate, we need to put some stuff in the side menu so we can use it. Well, all menus need to have at least one button, so let's make it. Just don't forget to disable the image maskable option. For the text, we will go to the extra setting and then we'll disable the maskable. If it doesn't work for you right away, reload the scene and you will see the text. Let's do the same thing for a text and make our own title. Now when we press play, everything that is inside the side menu will move with it. Now we can celebrate. Okay, that was nice, but we are not finished yet. But before we continue, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to learn more cool stuff to make your game better. The next thing we want to do is to make the menu come from the button. You can do the same thing to all other directions. To do this, simply change the side and position of the menu to the bottom of the canvas and change the menu's placement property from left to bottom. When we play the scene, the menu will load with an offset. To fix that, just change the pivot from the menu from the side to the middle. And now it works. To customize everything a bit more, let's create a handle button to open and close our menu. After creating a simple button, let's change the onClick function. We will attach this to the setting object and pick the toggle state from the simple side menu script. As you can see, we also have the open and close functions and we'll discuss them later. Just remember that you can use this function in other scripts too and not only using the button. Now when we play the scene, we will see that everything gets blurred except our button. To change this, we just need to move our button in the project hierarchy. In this scene, we created a few more buttons with the different functions open, toggle and close. Let's see what the difference. It's pretty obvious, but we will go through it anyway. We have to make sure that the toggle state on press and close on press is disabled because otherwise we won't be able to see the difference. So now when we press play we can obviously see that the open just opens the menu, close just close the menu and the toggle button change between open and close. Not that difficult right? Just know that because that we didn't disable it we can drag our menu to close it. To make it a bit better we'll go to the handle, change the handle size position and I'll put an image on it, I will just use one of the default photos from the asset. Make sure that draggable is enabled, that way we can drag the menu from the bottom to the top and close it back instead of using the buttons. 
So after trying a bit more customization, my scene crashed and I had to rebuild everything. I'll show you in a second why it crashed and how to avoid it. And obviously when I tried to keep recording, my toggle button function wasn't the correct function, so I had to remake it again. Like, not to remake it, to change the function to the right function. Okay, so now we can customize our menu. Let's start with the basics. Transition speed. The bigger the value is, the faster the menu gonna enter and exit the scene. Let's jump to overlay blur radius. The bigger the number is, the more blurred your scene will be. But remember, if you want just one object not to be affected by the blur, just move it below the menu on the hierarchy. The next thing walk only out of play mode. That's what made my scene crash. It's the overlay color. You can change it to any color you want and it will give a bit more customization to your side menu. You can also test it on play mode when the menu is open, but you can't open and close it while you're testing this. You can remove the blur so you will only have the overlay function or remove all the overlay and you will have nothing. But without the overlay, you can't click anywhere to close the menu, you have to use the button or drag the menu down. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and you can join up our Discord to ask questions and show your work. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you later. Bye!